So this last video in the set of videos is all about compaction. So compaction is a, about the removal of air from the soil. It's a process that we can intentionally uh, do to the, to the soil to improve its, uh, its properties. So it's, a, it's unlike consolidation, which is concerned with uh, how water um, flows out of the soil um, during loading. Uh, compaction is a, an intentional process that we can do to the soil to remove the air. Um, so during compaction, the, um, the bulk density increases, so the total volume uh, decreases, but the mass stays the same. So we can say that we've got an increase in bulk density. And we've also got an increase in saturation ratio. You can see that the voids within the, uh, uh, the soil are getting smaller. The water is staying the, the same. So that means that we've got a, an increase in saturation ratio. Um, on the other hand, we've got a decrease in void ratio and specific volume. Void ratio and specific volume decrease. Um, and notionally, water content stays the same. So we know that water content um, is equal to the mass of water over the mass of the solid. And we can see that, in theory, we should expect water content to stay the same. So anyone who's done a compaction test knows that water, uh, it's an inevitable that water will uh, flow out of the soil during the test. But relatively, um, it's, it, compaction is mainly about the removal of air from the soil. So we use something called a Proctor compaction test to examine the compaction properties of a soil. So a Proctor compaction test looks something like this, where we have a, a, a mould. Um, where we can put our soil sample in and we use a hammer to compact the soil with, into the mould and there's a, um, a, a proviso for the, 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 the number of blows and the number of layers that you, you, you use to put the soil into the, into the mould. Um, but once we've compacted the soil into the mould, we'll take the, the outer ring or the upper ring off the, um, off the mould and we'll scrape um, the, the surface level. Um, and then we'll measure the mass of the soil that's retained in the bottom part of the compaction mould. And because we know the volume of that soil, um, because the compaction mould has a, um, uh, a definite um, size, we can, uh, we can work out the, the density. We also then take a, um, a sample of that material and measure the moisture content. So we record from the Proctor compaction test our bulk density and our water content. And we can use those two things to work out the dry density of the soil. Now, if we then plot a graph which relates this dry density to water content, we'll get uh, data in a shape that looks something like this. In, in practice, it never looks that um, the, uh, the data never looks that elegant, but. Um, we should find some, somewhere within our data we have a peak. Um, so the reason why we have an increase in, in dry density with increasing water content is that we have increasing soil suction in this part of the curve. <coughs> um, and we eventually reach a, a, a maximum, um, which we call the um, optimum water content. So this is the optimum water content at the maximum dry density, so dry density max. And then after that, we have excessive water content within the soil pores, so we start to have a decrease in uh, dry density. So this is quite useful for, um, uh, for practice when we're trying to uh, understand what um, maximum dry density might be possible within our, our soil uh, for a given water content.